Welcome back, everybody, to the Anything OU podcast. As always, I am your host, Christian Williams, and you might notice a very special face to the left of me here, Mr. Andrew Smith, our producer. Andrew, how you doing? Doing great, man. Good. Good, good, good. Glad to hear it. But hey, before we get into this video with G. Juarez, we need to tell you a little bit about our sponsor, www.hornsdownshop.com. If you need to pick up any of your cool OU gear that you cannot get on Campus Corner or anywhere else in Norman, you can do so at the first link in the description below. You can even support us too. We really appreciate it if you guys go check them out. Let's get in the video. Welcome back, everybody. We've got uh, Giselle Juarez with us today. Uh, just a quick introduction to some of her accolades. She was the 2021, uh, not only national champion, but also the most outstanding player of the Women's World Series, um, all tournament team, all Big 12, um, pitchers 19. So really appreciate her taking some time and uh, joining us today. What's up, G? Hi, how are you? <laughs> good. Doing good, doing good. Thank you for coming on. It is, it is a Absolutely. pleasure. Absolutely, I'm excited. Yeah. So I'm going to open it right up into questions and I want to ask you kind of a personal one, you know, tell us about your family and um, just how they mentored you and allowed you to be what you became. Um, my family consists of my parents, uh, Dulcinea Juarez and William Juarez, and they were like, I have siblings um, and they, older brother, older sister, so I'm kind of the baby. And then I have my niece. Um, she's four now, so I'm like super grateful for her. Um, but my parents played a big role in just like getting me everywhere. Um, they were willing to like sacrifice their weekends for me, um, especially with club ball and everything. And my dad was basically my pitching coach. Um, my mom was the one who pushed me when I when I used to hit. She was the one who pushed me to hit better. Um, and then. But yeah, dad was mainly the pitching coach. Like, I think at the World Series, like he was still the only voice besides like this one lady um, that I heard in the stands. Um, and I know he wasn't even close to like the backstop or anything like that. Um, but like, I could still hear him. Um, but it was, he played a huge part in like how and what I became as a pitcher. Okay, so G, we obviously know that uh, you didn't start your career at Oklahoma. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, what that transition process was like for you and also what brought you to Oklahoma, what made you choose Oklahoma? Um, the process was really hard. Um, just deciding to leave, um, not only the school that was in state and that I had given two years to, but leaving my home state in general um, and leaving my family um, being 45 minutes or when I chose OU, it was 14 hours. Um, so that was a really tough decision. And I, uh, my now fiance, uh, we were already doing long distance. Um, he was at U of A, University of Arizona, and I was at ASU. So just deciding to leave that too, like, was even tougher choice. Um, but when I decided to go to OU and I decided to commit, I kind of already had this idea in my head when I was going on my visit, like, I feel like this might be a good fit. Like I know coach Gasso has the lefty legacy, like how awesome would it be to be a part of that? Um, but I, someone mentioned a comment to me that was like, well, before I had even gone on my visit was like, don't let them flash their shiny trophies to you. And I was like, kind of off put by that and everything. But when I went on my visit, it was nothing like that. It was nothing about the trophies. It was nothing about the lefty legacy um I think I was at the field for a total of 20 30 minutes because I was taking pictures um I didn't really get shown the facility it was it was definitely more of like a here let me show you what my program is about outside of softball and um like it was very family oriented it was very like we went to coach Gasso's house and we played uno um <laughs> with her husband Poppy and so just like having that was really a big reason why I chose OU just because it was so different and really about me as a person as opposed to me as a player um so that had a huge part of why I chose OU that's that's super cool you got you went to her house and of all things played at Uno <laughs> right yeah, like crazy. super cool hey so take you back in and I know we we talked about it before started recording but um there was one particular game right 
there was one pitch left and you got to win the national championship. So take us through your mind, you know, what was going through your head on that last pitch of the world series? If you, if you can remember, <laughs> if you can remember that. Cause... Um, well, I don't remember like what was going through my head in that exact moment. Um, I remember the crowd being super loud. Um, and I know I want to say either a couple pitches before or, the batter before I had walked him. I remember that specifically because it was four balls in a row and Coach Rocha came out there. And the only thing I was thinking, like when I walked that girl was don't throw the ball over first base. Like I was thinking don't over throw because I know like typically the ball comes back to the pitcher um, at the end. And so when the ball went to Nicole Mendez in the outfield, I thought she was going to catch it. And I was like, Oh man, like, what do we do? Um, she didn't catch it, but the next pitch, I was like, okay, now you have to, like, calm down. Um, and I just remember hearing the crowd, and I was really hoping the ball wasn't going in the sun because I'm not kidding. It was, like, right next to the sun. I don't know how it didn't go and line up with the sun, um, but I was just, like, once it happened, I I don't even know what happened. Next thing I know, I was on the ground. Just It was all really fast, honestly. <laughs> no, I remember. It's awesome. When that pit, as soon as you threw the ball, I knew it was like, oh, this is hittable, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. the ball gets hit and it's, a, it, you know, it goes straight up. And I'm like, oh, she could catch this ball. Like this game over. And then you caught the ball. <laughs> I had an open water bottle and I was taking a sip. As the ball hit your glove, I spit out my water, threw it in the <laughs> air, completely forgetting about the cap. Water goes everywhere. And I just scream, we're national champions. That'll be a memory <laughs> That's I will never awesome. forget because my mom was so angry at me that water <laughs> got all over her furniture and I was like I don't know what you want me to say like <laughs> we uh, just yeah so, yeah so I, I was go ahead I was uh I, I, I was in the stands for that I was in the left field bleachers like right on mm -hmm. the edge right then like basically on the fence like and just every single pitch was anticipation like this could be it mm -hmm. like and, 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 and everybody knew it, like the crowd knew it. And I, and I say this before, uh, showing up to game three was very businesslike for the crowd. It was, we're here to win a national championship. Like that's what we're here to do. Um, I was in, there in game one, the, the atmosphere was so electric because nobody could win that day. Everybody was just excited to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we lost, but like, it was still amazing. It was one of the best, if not the best sporting event I've ever been to atmosphere wise. Um, and then game three, and just like letting it out and like witnessing a national championship in person is unbelievable, and I'll never forget it. I can only imagine what it'd be like to win one. I like remember getting up off the ground and like some guys yelling my name. It was the guy with the trophy, um, and I was like kind of shocked he handed it to me. I was like. What are, what are you handing this to me for? Uh, I thought he was going to hand it to like Jossie or something. Um, but I just, I remember after like talking to everybody um, and everything kind of settled and I was grabbing my glove after all the pictures and I was like, did I hold on to the ball long enough? Like, I wasn't sure if I like actually secured the out. I don't know. Um, but I just remember catching it and then Kinsey Hansen coming straight at me as I was like, looking at her and whatnot so it was crazy that's amazing so uh we've talked a little bit about now your time on the field so uh we'd really love to hear a story when you're at OU spent two years here off the field um give us a story there oh man I have to think about this now um I'm trying to think I don't know all I think about are like times at coach's house when we would play Uno and it would be like the most intense thing um and there would be different games of uno going on because poppy uh coach's husband has different sizes of cards like he has the big cards like that are the size of my face and he has like the itty bitty cards that you can barely see on um and sometimes i think shannon brought um it's the one where you press a button or something like that yeah. and you hope that it doesn't spit a bunch at you we played that once at coach's house. Like there are so many memories just at coach's house. Um, I think of one of like me and Jana, um, we were trying to paddle board on the same board and we we're both trying to stand up. 
we kept falling in the water. It was like the worst. I got scratched up from the paddleboard and everything. And I think those are like just the memorable times that I have or just being at coach's house. I think that's one of the monikers traditionally of Patty's teams is that they're extremely close off the field. Um, yeah. so it's awesome that she fosters that environment and, and Uno of all games is a part of it. That's, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you got to partake in two, two really cool universities throughout your playing career. Um, what would you say was the biggest difference in yourself as a player and as a person um, <clears throat> from ASU to OU? Um, as a player, I think I just became more selfless. Um, if I had to think of, I think of the World Series times, um, what's crazy to me is when I was at ASU, we played OU um, at the World Series. Um, mm-hmm. We lost. Um, it's okay. I gave up Josie's 29th home run. Her, she's welcome. Um, <laughs> but we, like, I remember not being mad, but not being like, hey, I got you after, like, an error would happen or something big would happen. And I think when I got to OU, it was more of a, okay, it's all of us, not just one of us type of mentality. And I became that person that was like, Hey, I got you. Like, even if I was the one who made the mistake. Um, And it was um, like, when I went into the UCLA game, it wasn't to, for me thinking in the time, like, Oh, I'm going to get redemption on UCLA for 2019. It was, I got Nicole Smith. Nicole Mays back because she had mine so many times the year before or not the year before the games before so just like thinking about that and becoming more selfless and doing it for someone else on the team and I think it would became more of a staff too as a player like having that staff mentality too on the field so you mentioned your fiance congrats by the way um, Thank you. tell us about uh, life after softball or are you still playing what do you what do you got going on now um okay so after I was done playing I went to Japan for a little bit um and played professionally over there which was a dream of mine which I was like oh my gosh this is really happening um I actually ended up halfway through the last half of their season because of COVID and visas and complications um so I've been back since November and I live in Tucson now Tucson Arizona and um I kind of just I've been rehabbing or physical doing physical therapy for my knee I got injured in Japan um and now I'm doing PT um and everything again for like the fifth time in my life um but I don't know if I'm gonna play for sure next year I'm kind of just taking it day by day just because I am gonna miss the season of AU and WPF um, due to rehab and everything. So I am just kind of giving pitching lessons for now. I'm coaching my old club ball team this summer based out in Alabama. I'll actually be in OKC for a little bit for a tournament that they're doing out there. So I'm excited to be back in Oklahoma for a little bit, even if it's just for a short bit of time, but living in Tucson, giving lessons, living with my fiance, um, wedding planning so super Ooh, I'm sure that's fun. boring stuff yeah <laughs> um yeah wedding venues are very hard to find yeah I bet. so especially yeah. with the world and how crazy it is yeah yeah so you could say that we have a pretty okay team this year <laughs> <laughs> they're um, all right I guess <laughs> yeah we're all right and I was wondering about you know as a natty champ yourself and someone that's been there what are your thoughts on this year's team? Because some of these people on this team you played with. So mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on this year's team? And obviously the end goal is a national championship, but you know, where do you see them? Um, I see them potentially repeating. Um, I think they have obviously like most of the returners um, are in the lineup still. Um, and they have a, phenomenal freshman um who has stepped up in huge games and is getting innings under her belt um which is amazing um and just seeing her compete this year has been so awesome but I think what's even cooler to me is that while the offense is the same the pitching staff is so different this year and I see them working together so well I mean you have probably the you have the person with the top ERA in the country um hope 
and you have Nicole May who has that World Series experience who can help lead the pitching staff um, to another run at a national championship. And then you have Jordy Ball who just comes in and throws like no freshman I've ever seen. Um, so I'm just excited to watch the pitching staff because, you know, that's my side of the game. Um, but I'm also just, I know these hitters, like they're going to have their pitchers back and um, you've seen it all year long. Um, when they are tested, they do have their pitchers back and they come back with a vengeance when they lose. So I'm excited to see how they bounce back from this past week and to go into regionals and supers and then hopefully the World Series and just get after it. I see them yeah. repeating potentially for sure. So one of the people that I wanted to ask you about specifically was we had Hope on. Um, mm -hmm. I was wondering at your, your thoughts on her because she's having a pretty historical season. Like she's doing with the time that she has gotten a pitch, she's done really well. And you yes. know, OSU game, like she struggled at times, but I mean, she, she just, when she's on, she is, she's mm -hmm. one of the best out there. And so I, I just wanted to hear your thoughts about her specifically. I think hope is so underrated on this team. Um, at least I don't hear her getting talked about as much as she should be. Um, and she like, man, I don't have enough good words to say, honestly. Um, she's clutch. She is composed. She is just phenomenal. And when she, like you said, like when she's on, she's firing. And yeah. I think the cool part is like, I got to meet her before um, I was like officially done and everything. So just knowing her personality too, like just seeing her and sometimes we talk on social media and whatnot. Um, but just watching her, like, I just see this fire, like she's not letting anybody get by her um and like again nobody's perfect like but even her bad days really aren't bad days yeah like they're like you have a plus days and then you have a days for her um yeah. so it's just really exciting to see her when she does get to pitch and like because I know like she's just gonna rock rock it so I'm excited to see how like she does do. during this oh yeah Grace Lyons I mean are you kidding me Patrick Mahomes I, tweeting at her. Yeah, like, yeah, no yeah I was going to say, getting a tweet from Patrick, <laughs> like, I think we should have at least three Gold Glove winners on this team, if, if not more. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, oh, I agree. Grace Lyons will freaking die if she gets a Gold <laughs> Glove. I I know her. She takes pride in her gloves already, but if she were to get one of those, that would be like her first pride one, and joy, right? Like the very first. Mm -hmm. one? Yeah. <clears throat> I think she should get the very first one. I agree. Yes. So, it's just me. <clears throat> Okay, so we've got um, – Oklahoma has the largest social media following in softball. Um, mm -hmm. That can be a good and bad thing as far as social media impacting players. Um, Want to get some of your thoughts. I know you shared some on a Facebook post recently, um, but it also can be a positive thing as well. So I want to just get your shot, or your thoughts a little bit on that, on social media impact. Um, it's really hard because while, yes, I want – so – let me back up. So there are really, there are positive side effects, like sides of social media. But I think as a former athlete, I do, there are some athletes who can pay attention to only the positive, but there are athletes who also, it's hard to pay attention when you see that one person who says that one negative thing. And I think just not enough people are giving grace to these athletes. Um, I can't imagine what people would have said about me if I was on social media as much as I am now last year. Like, I'm so glad I wasn't. Um, but, I mean, I think people expect so much because we are one of the best teams in the country and we do have one of the biggest followings um, that they expect perfection. And it's yeah. hard to live up to that expectation all the time. And sometimes the game doesn't go our way. So I think people just need to remember like, hey, we are athletes. We do have other things to focus on sometimes, but we want to win more than the fans, honestly. Um, and I think when we lose, we take it harder than anyone else in the world. Um, and we already put so much pressure on ourselves to like, because we know we have our own expectations. We have coaches' expectations. We have possibly our family's expectations. And so it's hard to manage like the social media aspect, but I know this team specifically, OU does a really good job. Like the, it's usually girl um, by done by the girls, but at the beginning of the season, what we did last year was we would take the first weekend 
and not try not to pay attention to social media. And the same thing goes for like at the World Series. Um, we try not to get on it as often. Um, or some of us would try like we'd be like, hey, like I'm not gonna get on this weekend this week. So just don't mention it or whatever. So just really trying not to pay attention to what everyone else has to say and focusing on like our own bubble. So I think people just need to have that reminder of being kind sometimes. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's there's a lot less of that than there should be on social media as far as just being nice to people because you don't know mm-hmm. this person. So just yeah, I'm gonna show a good impression and just be respectful. So we have two kind of fun questions for you to end it off here. And um okay. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and ask it for you. What is your favorite place to eat in Norman in your time there? Mm-hmm. Volcano. It's um, a Mexican go. food place. It's the Mexican one, though. It's not the sushi one. I mean, that okay. Was too, <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's the Mexican restaurant for me. Okay, there you go. And then, so we have your favorite food of all time. Like, what is just your favorite? Ooh, um, I don't know. That's a very hard question. Um, okay, if like the first thing that comes to my head is popcorn, but I guess that's kind of there my you go. answer. Although that's more of a snack, but whatever. No, I agree. Yeah, I would agree with you. Like, Pop, yeah, popcorn, popcorn slaps. Like, like, okay. So okay, it's a comfort we'll, food. <laughs> it, it is. For and then here, here's another comfort for, food for you. Kind of an early in the morning, though. What is your favorite cereal? Cereal. Um, I think it's called Golden Crisp. Yeah. I very rarely have it anymore, but it's the one with like the frog. Right. Right. Is it a frog? I think it's, it's a frog. I think it's a frog. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, we, that's all. I think it's the frog. We appreciate you for coming on, and uh, you are always welcome over here on the uh, thanks. podcast. Thanks. Hopefully, thanks. I was really. It was just actually really fun, so I'm excited Good. that I got to do this. Good. Yeah. So we appreciate you, and um, best of luck to you with your beautiful fiance, and hopefully everything <laughs> <Thanks>. goes well. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you. That's about everything on the Anything Are You podcast. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, I am your host, Christian Williams. And again, we have a very beautiful face, Andrew Smith. Andrew, you got anything you want to leave the people with, man? Yeah, just really looking forward to World Series week. Um, girls are going to do great. So I'm going to do my best to be at as many games as I can. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, absolutely. Hey, and uh, make sure you go check out Horns Down Shop. Pick up a t-shirt from us. We'd really appreciate it helps us out a lot and uh, you can you can be sporty and sport all the cool goods but anyways that's been everything see you guys later